Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramini. I'm a French photographer from Paris, the amazing city, the fantastic city, living in the USA. But I'm very often in Paris. And when I was in Paris, I got this new camera, the Leica Q3. I am not being sponsored by Leica. I would love to be sponsored by Leica. So if you work at Leica, please contact me. I just love this camera. Why do I love it? Because it's uh, it's got lots of pixels, like 60 million pixel. It's got a 27 millimeter 1.7 lens, which is the sharpest lens I ever used. And um, basically what I've been doing, I mean, you can see on this photo, which we're gonna be retouching, I've been not using so much of a tripod. Uh, this photo I shot at 2.2 ISO 100, 1250. Like it's it's a crazy sunset. I was just walking by and then just got that, that photo. I love already the raw file, like right out of the box how it looks. But the main reason why I love this camera is because I'm very lazy and I don't like to shoot with a tripod. And because this opens to 1.7, I always focus to something that's very far away. And I put, uh, I don't even put the self timer on and I have been able to take photos up to one in the morning and photos that I'm selling in galleries. And now I mostly use my Sony for uh, if I need to zoom in on something like for like zooming in on the photo or for doing long exposure. But from like day to day work, you know, there's a nice sunset in a nice city. I just walk around with that. I just love the constraint of having just a wide angle and you have to find, I love wide angle photography. Most of my photos are 24, 25 millimeter. So 27 is fine. And it's just what an object. One of the new feature of the Q3 is that, you know, you have the, like all those other cameras, you have this. But the reason that I like it is like, it looks like nothing. And, uh, and you get photos that, that, you know, that I can print in huge and super quality. For example, this photo, which I am going to sell in galleries that I shot, like I was just walking on a bridge and I saw this sunset and I just took a snapshot like this. And look at the, look at the resolution, 9,520 by 6,336. It's absolutely crazy. So I find that retouching Lake Eiffel is a bit different than Sony, especially my presets don't work really well. In fact, I'm, gonna, I'm working on creating some Lake Eiffel presets, which I will give for free in the next video. So make sure you subscribe so you can get the presets for free. They're gonna be really cool presets and they're all free for you if you're watching my YouTube channel. So I'm going to open a shadow and I'm gonna bring down the highlights on this one. And um, I mean, the raw files look different than Sony, even the color sense is different. I, I really, really, really like these files. Um, I Actually on this one, I might not bring the sh highlights all the way. Uh, even if you open a shadow, it, look how sharp this photo is. It is sharp absolutely everywhere. Look, I can read what's here. And I shot this like walking fast and it's just crazy. Like I've never had such a sharp photo in my life. Anyways, uh, and this setup actually cost me less than my Sony because this one I got like for four or 5,000 and the Sony with a 24 cent two point cost me 6,000. So it was even cheaper. Anyways, I'm gonna do my black point here. So black point is when you press the option key on Lightroom, what you see here in black and red and blue is something which is 100% black, which is what I want. And then the white point, I'm just gonna move this until I, and it's gonna reveal the photo until I have something that I like. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now I lost a lot of detail on the highlights, so I'm gonna bring down the highlights a little bit. Yeah, not too much, just a little bit. And voila. And now I'm ready, so that's just step number one. I always do exposure first, and then I do the white balance. So the white balance is where it gets a bit tricky, very different from my Sony RAW files. On this one, I lost all the blue here in the sky. So let's go maybe to daylight to see how it is. Yeah, daylight is, you see, even, even the presets in Lightroom looks weird on a Leica camera. They don't match at all, like they look really weird. So you really have to do it by hand. So I'm gonna go to as shot, uh, and then I'm just gonna add back a bit of blue, cause the sky was a bit blue, and then add back some magenta, a lot of magenta actually on this one, but maybe not. Let's add, let's go for a very warm look. I, I, you know what, I'm gonna add the blue locally. I'm actually gonna boost the yellow a lot and boost the magenta. I want to make a very warm photo, like very warm color, because it was a beautiful sunset, you know? And then maybe add a little bit of vibrance on this one. Okay, and then, so step number two is to do the white balance. Step number three is going to be, and by the way, I have a new book that just came out on Lightroom that you can get the link under the video. It's a book that shows you how to retouch photos in five steps. And you can actually get the printed version for free, plus you get two weeks for free of coaching. If you pay shipping and handling, the link is under this video. So you, saturation and luminance. Okay, so you, 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 what is you? Well, you is basically the nature of the color. So if I click on this, for example, and I click somewhere on the yellow and I go up, 
it becomes very greenish. And if I go down, it becomes much more red. Ooh, I like it a little more red. I want to change a little bit so it's a little more red. I kind of like that. Okay. And then, uh, so yeah, just try to make sure that you don't, don't go over minus 40 on the, on, on the U. Because if you do, check this out. You're going to get, it's going to do some weird things that I call artifacts. So this one, I'm going to put like minus 33. I just want some nice warmer color. I like my sunset to be more orange and red than have this sort of greenish thing in it. I don't like that at all. And then I'm going to go to saturation and I'm going to increase the three, the first three colors of the saturation. So we get a really nice saturated sunset. And then I'm going to go to luminance and in luminance, I want to make the, I want to check out the blue here. You know what? I'm actually going to go into you first. I'm going to click on this tool here. I'm going to click on the sky. And if I go up and down, see what happened. Ooh, I like it down even more. Yeah, it's making it, look at this. It's making this whole sky a lot more red, which I love because that's how it felt to me. Uh, maybe that's a bit too much, minus 42. So remember, you know, oh, that's so cool. Okay, back to luminance. I think I want to make that sky a little bit darker. So I'm going to go here and take this thing here and make it a bit darker. Yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm losing a bit the blue in the sky, but that's fine. But look at this. Look at the difference between before and after. Look at this, how it makes the sunset so much richer. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo! I am liking this. Okay, I think this photo, I'm going to make it 16 by 9. 16 by 9. And make sure, like, I'm trying to do three videos per week right now, which is a challenge I I decided to do for this summer. I don't know if I'm going to do it all the time, but leave me in the comments what you would like to learn. I'm looking for ideas of videos to do. Okay, 16 by 9. <sighs> now, why did I do 16 by 9? Because it's it's my screen. And I kind of like the idea of like having like two third, you know, two third of the city here and one third of sky, like above here. And like, I almost want to have the, uh, yeah, I almost want to have the, not quite on it. Yeah, the, the tree on the rule of third, something like that. Woo, that's dynamic. Okay, now I think it's a little too magenta, so I'm going to back it down just a tad. Woo, I love that. I want to bring back some of the blue. So it's time to do step number four. Uh, so number one, I repeat, is get your exposure right. Number two, do your white balance. You can't do your white balance until exposure is right. And then number three, you and saturation and luminance to make the colors. And then number four, that's when we do the dodge and burn. So what is dodge and burn? Dodge and burn is making darker or brighter your photo. So I'm going to dodge the very top of the photo like that. And... Um, Voila, I'm going to make it darker here and add some blue. Now, this is where the blue comes back. You see, I'm adding back some blue in the sky, just a little bit of blue and uh, maybe not that dark, maybe not that dark, just a little bit of blue. Why am I darkening the sky? Because I want people to look inside and having the top of the sky a bit dark is kind of cool. I mean, look at the colors. Look how sharp this photo is. Look how sharp the water is. And like you can look as far as you want. I mean, taking a photo like this, walking by hand, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. In fact, you know what? I'm going to give you the Lake IQ3 raw file under this video so that you can play around with it. And, uh, and, and you can just post it on social media and you just credit me. If you don't have the money to fly to Paris to go in front of the Louvre the Musée d'Orsay on a beautiful night, I'm giving you the raw file from Lake Just play around with it and retouch it, but give me the credit as a photographer. Please don't sell the photo. You can print it for your home if you want. You can make an incredible acrylic Peter Link $25,000 print for your home on me, no problem. Just don't resell it. That's all I'm asking you. And then, uh, so, okay, I'm gonna make this a bit darker, just the, the very bottom of the photo a bit darker. And uh, on this one, I'm just gonna take a little brush for the dodge and burn brush. And I wanna get the highlights to be a bit better. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make this a bit lower. And I, I've showed this before, but I want to show it again so you understand. Let's say I, I add a bit of exposure and that my feather is at 0% and that my flow intensity is all the way. Check this out. So if I brush, now look what's going to happen. It's going to look really weird, right? But then if I add the flow, the feather, so we're all the way to 100 and I brush, it's going to look a little better, but it's still not great. But now if I lower the flow in the density and I brush, you see, it's a lot more subtle. And if I lower the exposure even more, it's even more subtle. You can hardly see it. So that's what you want. So I'm going to erase this brush and we're going to do it again. 
And we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure the feather is at 100 and the flow and density in the 70s. And now, but don't tell anybody I told you this, guys, because this is my secret. I'm gonna add a bit of exposure. Make sure you don't go over 0.5. And I'm just gonna go in that photo and I'm just gonna put a bit more highlight points. See, like on the tree here, it's bright. I'm gonna make this a bit brighter. What I'm trying to do, look at this photo, how incredible sharp it is. I'm, what I'm trying to do is just make some of the highlights a bit more visible, like especially here on the tree. It, it's a small thing. Uh, it's a small thing. But, you know, Leonardo da Vinci used to say that uh, details makes perfection and that perfection is not a detail. Okay, I can't believe how sharp this photo is. And uh, yeah, Lake IQ3, ladies and gentlemen, that's the camera. My new favorite camera. I'm still working with Sony, but uh, now is, is my go-to camera to walk around. Look at this. So let me show you before the brush stroke. It doesn't look like anything before, after. See, before, after. It's just a little bit of highlights, okay? And uh, so we went from here to here. Make sure you download the raw file. I want to see what you can do on it. Post it on TikTok or Instagram or social media. Just tag me at Add Photo Surge. And the best retoucher, I will repost to 100,000 people. And, you know, if you want to play on one of those photos, do it. But, uh, yeah, and if you work at Leica, please contact me. I would love, love to work with you. I love this camera. I'll see you in another video.